Since a quarter of all people who take the MCAT end up retaking it, you want to do everything in your power to prepare for the MCAT the right way and hopefully avoid having to take that seven and a half hour exam more than once. Nadine here with Inspire Advantage, helping students get accepted into medical school and other professional programs. So when it comes to preparing for the MCAT, here are seven tips to help you succeed. Number one, learn about the MCAT. You don't want to be surprised on test day, so it's important to understand the four different sections of the test, the questions you can expect, and the time you'll have for each section. Let me tell you the basics. In seven and a half hours of seated time, you'll go through these four sections. Psychological, biological, and social foundations of behavior. 95 minutes and 59 questions to expect. Biological and biochemical foundations of living systems. 95 minutes, 59 questions. Chemical and physical foundations of biological systems, 95 minutes, 59 questions. And finally, the critical analysis and reasoning skills section known as CARS, 90 minutes, 53 questions. The second tip is to take a diagnostic test. How close are you currently to reaching your goals? How much time do you need to dedicate to studying? What areas are you struggling with? To answer these questions, you'll need to take a full-length MCAT diagnostic test to determine your baseline. You'll need to know what level of knowledge you possess in order to succeed. And this will also serve as a great introduction to the test format and the difficulty. Number three, gather your study resources. You'll want to make sure you have everything you'll need at your fingertips. Full-length practice tests, textbooks, sample questions, video courses, a tutor, whatever is going to be the best for you. The AAMC has a ton of free resources available on their website, so make sure you take advantage of this. Number four, create your study schedule. On average, students require around 10 to 15 hours a week to study for the exam. This is over a period ranging from three to six months, depending on the individual. In total, you should aim for 250 to 300 hours of total study time. What's important here is that you build your own personalized study schedule and try not to compare your schedule or habits with others. Every person's level of preparedness will be different, and everyone will have different classes, responsibilities, extracurriculars, work, and so on to juggle. So make sure you create something that is realistic and works with your schedule. This way, it'll be a lot easier to stick with it. Now, with that said, life can be unpredictable, so don't feel that you can't move things around in the week should something come up. Number five, build stamina and practice, practice, practice. The MCAT will be unlike any other test you've ever taken, and maintaining focus for seven and a half hours is very, very challenging. So to best prepare yourself, make sure you take as many full-length practice tests as you can, and ensure that you are simulating the same environment that you'll encounter during test day. Start by tackling one section of the test at a time, and progressively take on more parts of the test until you can complete the entire exam in one sitting. Then continue taking practice tests in one sitting so it becomes the norm and you'll be well prepared on test day. Number six, analyze your answers. To add value to your MCAT prep, think of practice tests as requiring two steps before completion. One is actually writing the test and the second one is going through your answers to find out the why behind all of your answers. Why you got the question wrong, but also why you got the question right. This is essential to help you determine areas you're succeeding in and areas that are weaknesses. Then you can go back to your study schedule and modify it to ensure that you're devoting more time and attention to areas that you're struggling with. Number seven, the final tip for today is to take the MCAT only when you are ready. If you're feeling uneasy or if you're unsure about how you'll perform on the MCAT, it's best to wait and take the test when you are truly ready. What does being ready mean? when you are consistently scoring well on your practice tests and that score is something you are happy with. This will give you the best indication of how you'll perform on test day, so use your practice test to your advantage. All right, thanks for tuning in to this video. Make sure that you're subscribing to the channel for all the latest and greatest on the med school application process. Cheers to your success.